Lobby groups for stranded Australians are welcoming the New South Wales government's decision to remove caps for international arrivals from next month. Quarantine requirements will also be removed for returnees who are fully vaccinated against COVID. Kate Jeffries is the co-founder of the Stranded Aussies Action Network and joins me now. Kate, a welcome development. Yeah, I think it's a, a bit of light at the end of a very long, dark tunnel for many stranded Australians still overseas. What has been the reaction or have you been able to gauge that reaction from those waiting to get home? Uh, obviously, it fills people with a bit of hope to be able to actually finally make it home. But I think a lot of them are quite, quite sceptical still, given the lack of federal leadership and the lack of cohesion between the states and the federal approach to quarantine. They sort of are a bit sceptical as to how it will actually play out. You've got personal experience in this. How hard was it for you to get home and to what extent was hotel quarantine to blame for that? I think hotel quarantine has been the crux of the issue from the beginning because of the, the limitations on spaces in hotel quarantine. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were stuck overseas for 10 months. Um, we had six failed flights to come home. Uh, finally got home and out of quarantine in January of this year. Um, and unfortunately, I, I would have liked to have seen home, home quarantine been a thing for the last 12 months. I mean, the two separate inquiries recommended home quarantine was actually safer for the community and would allow residents to come home. And that was ignored by the federal government. It's been proven overseas to be successful in places like Taiwan. And um, I would have liked to have seen this happening for at least the last 12 months. Do you know what it means for the other states? Of course, this is coming into New South Wales and this is the New South Wales decision today, but what it means for those who will be coming home and wanting to go to another state? Uh, yeah, that again just adds a whole nother level of uncertainty for people trying to get home. I, we reside in Perth and uh, again, that limited our options coming back to Australia because we were um, quite nervous to fly into any other capital city on on the basis that we may then be stuck there and not able to return to Western yeah. Australia. So unfortunately, because there's no cohesion and a, no leadership at the federal level, it's sort of, it's there's a lot of uncertainty for people trying to get home. As you say, the hotel quarantine placements were the crux of the issue with you trying to get home. With that obstacle removed now, from November 1st, I should say, do you think there will be more flights and also less flight cancellations? Uh, you would hope so. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of people, I think the people that are stranded overseas, uh, there's been a lot of misinformation that they are tourists or on holiday. I mean, no one's sitting on a beach having a cocktail. These are people who uh, went overseas pre-pandemic for a 12 months um, exchange program, nurses, ER doctors, teachers, things like that, who followed the government advice to shelter in place back in March. Mm -hmm. um, to not give up their accommodation and job and just see how it would play out and that these caps would not apply to them as Australian citizens. And unfortunately, the exact opposite happened and they were left with no assistance and actually um, vilified by levels of government and the public. It's been a very shameful response to stranded Australians, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. We're hearing that returning Australians will be the priority here over tourists, for example. Do you think there'll be the level of organisation required to instruct that in this system? Uh, well, logically, you would hope that that is the way it is rolled out. But again, we've seen, you know, people in the UK last year were going to embassies to seek assistance um, and they were given information like lists of hel uh, homeless shelters and things like that. It was mm -hmm. That was the only assistance the embassy could provide. And at the same time, we were welcoming in, welcoming in entire sports teams, their families um, into Australia whilst denying Australian taxpaying citizens the right to come home. So again, it would be very interesting to see how this plays out. I think uh, a lot of it has had no logic if you look at all of the, the people who are actually testing positive and are allowed to quarantine at home, and yet people stranded overseas return a negative test before flying, less than 1% test positive when they arrive, and most of them are fully vaccinated, and they are still 18 months old, 
uh, 18 months on stuck overseas. It's, it's disgraceful. Do you agree that those who are not vaccinated should still have to quarantine in hotels? Uh, I don't think the hotel quarantine is fit for purpose. I think there's other options out there that have been tried and tested, like uh, technology assisted um, home quarantine. It's worked very successfully in Taiwan for hundreds of thousands of people for many, many months. Uh, it was what was recommended by both hotel quarantine inquiries and that should have been happening in Australia. And if people are returning that are unvaccinated, they should have that option, absolutely. Kate Jeffries, the co-founder of the Stranded Aussies Action Network. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me.